Also lunch. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you all to the Moscow Board of Adjustments meeting on Thursday, August 20th, 2015. And we will start with approval of minutes from our May 19th meeting. I move approval. Okay. I have a motion for approval. Do I hear a second or someone with Scribner's? Um, I wasn't here. You weren't here. I wasn't here he either. Wasn't here but, either. Uh, well, I don't you and I, we're the only we ones. We are the only ones. I was just getting I ready to look at that. See, them. Um, I can second motions, correct? I think you're going to have sure. to. <laughs> I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? I have to abstain on this one. I wasn't there. There we go. It, minutes have passed with two ayes, zero nays, and two abstentions. Good evening, board members. Before you tonight is a application for a conditional use permit at 460 North Almond Street. The applicant is requesting a conditional use permit to allow a residential use on the ground floor and not located above or behind a commercial use within the motor business zone. The conceptual plans include a two-story multifamily residential structure with underground parking and 28 units. Seven units are proposed to be located on the ground floor and adjacent to the street frontage. The subject property is located here, outlined in red. This is West East Street, and this is North Almond Street. Here's a photo of the property looking to the south. This is standing on E Street with the Rosars grocery store here, and this is Almond Street. And then just another shot from Almond Street looking to the southeast. The subject property is located within the motor business zone. The motor business zone allows residential uses, uses including residential rental unit located on the ground floor which are not located behind commercial uses as a conditionally permitted use. As I mentioned, it's in the motor business zone and as well as all properties to the north, the east, and the south. Properties to the west are in the R4 multifamily residential zone, and that property contains the Robinson Mobile Home Park. The, the properties surrounding include um, retail mostly. To the north is the new Revolution Motorsports development. That This aerial is a few years old, so it doesn't show it. And then the east is the Rosar Supermarket, and to the south is an undeveloped vacant lot currently. The subject property is also currently undeveloped and it has 24,492 square feet. The parcel is approx has approximately 80 feet of frontage on West East Street and 200 feet of frontage on Almond Street. Access to the subject property can come from either Almond or East Street. Almond Street is a 40 foot wide paved street with curb, gutter, and sidewalk on the west side. And East Street is a 35 foot wide street with curb, gutter, and sidewalk on the south side. This is a conceptual site plan for the proposed development. This is north on the left side of the screen with E Street here and Almond Street here. The conceptual plan is to have vehicles access off of E Street with some the disabled parking here, two other required parking spaces here, and then vehicles driving down into underneath the building into a parking underground parking. The conceptual plan meets all zoning development standards, so building setbacks, open space requirements, um, required parking spaces, and building height. So all the zoning code development standards are met by the conceptual plans. This is the west elevation proposed, which would face Almond Street. So the ground floor residential that they are requesting the CUP for would would resemble that. And then the north elevation, which would face all, um, E Street, is shown here. 
applications for conditional use permits um, have a series of relevant criteria and standards that are reviewed. I'm just going to read through those just to refresh everyone's memory on what's reviewed when approving a conditional use permit. Will the proposed use endanger the public health or safety and will it result in nuisances? Does the proposed use meet all applicable development standards? Will the proposed use be injurious or detrimental to adjoining properties or the neighborhood? Is the proposed use a public necessity or justified to be of benefit to the public? Will the character of the proposed use be in harmony with the area in which it is located? Will the proposed use endanger public health or safety? And will the proposed use be in conflict with the comprehensive plan? So based on those relevant criteria and standards, staff recommends approval of the application for a conditional use permit to allow a residential use on the ground floor and not located behind a commercial use at 460 North Almond Street. And we have no recommended conditions. I have a question. Uh, could you give us some <clears throat> of your thinking as to why this should be approved? Well, it goes back to these six or seven relevant criteria and standards. We feel that it, the, proposed, the proposed residential use on ground floor um, creates no endangerment to public health or safety. Um, it, again, it meets all the development standards. It's not injurious or detrimental to adjoining properties or the neighborhood. There's residential use across well, the street. Well, I understand that you can just go through and say yes, yes, yes. I want to know how you uh, arrived at that yes. What thought processes went into this? How did you analyze the neighborhood? Looking at everything that I've explained in the presentation, the surrounding uses, the surrounding zoning, the current use of the property, the fact that there was no public comment received, um, and again, reviewing the relevant criteria and standards for mm -hmm. a conditional use permit. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions? I don't have yeah. any questions. I, I have a couple. Um, in looking at the plan, um, it, it looks like the front yard is going to be considered the north side. No, the front yard is Almond Street. And in motor business, there's just a 10 foot setback okay. for a front yard. What about a backyard? There's no other setbacks in motor business. At all? So they could go clear up? To the edge. I'm sorry. The reason I the reason I ask is the plan shows four eleven and three quarter rather than five. I I wondered why that is. If if none is required, that's fine. But that would put a thirty foot top plate at less than five feet off of a property line. Yeah, there is no rear. There is I'm I there is a street side and a front of ten feet, but there's no rear or side. Okay, so setback. basically the back side is not subject to any setback height. Right. Okay. Other than um, possibly the building code may have a distance from property line that it has to be, but they've been in on the review of this as well. So. Okay. Um, the, um, this is kind of a question that it kind of stems from what um, Linda was just asking. In terms of, of meeting the proposed harmony of the, of the current neighborhood, there isn't an apartment building in that neighborhood to compare it with. So part of maybe maybe what she was getting at was in justification of the fifth criteria, how do we justify it being in harmony with something that it doesn't resemble in that vicinity? Well, I'd, I'd say that's up for the board members to certainly discuss and decide upon, but um, staff didn't feel there was anything wrong with this proposal. There are some residences on the upper floor of to the north on Almond Street. Um, <coughs> there's even one, I believe, above Revolution Motorsports. Okay. So um, right. it's up to the board to review those relevant criteria and standards and come up with a decision. Okay. Another question I have that related to the backyard setback. Could, could you go to the, I think it was the first photograph. Actually, that one will do. This one here? Yes. Okay. Where do those power lines fall in, in reference to the back lot line? And the reason I ask is the front side is going to have a 20-foot 
elevation. The back side or the east side is going to have a 30 foot elevation and that's going to be really close to those power lines. Okay. So it has a vista weight in. Yes, they have. I know that the applicant has worked, the designer, the drafter has worked, spoken with the vista and has received their uh, minimum setback from those power lines. Is this, uh, those power lines, presumably the buildings on the north side of E have the same issue with those power lines, is that right? Yes, I okay. believe. Is it going to be materially different than what the buildings on the north side are dealing with right now? I don't think so. I'm, I don't know exactly what they're dealing with, but I know that, you know, they run up north in the same and, and Avista vicinity. Has, we didn't receive any comment from Avista. They don't have any concerns that we're aware of. No, but okay. as far as we are aware, the, um, <coughs> let me get to the site plan. So <coughs> they don't show them on here, but they have communicated us to us that the building will meet the setback requirement that Avista gave them. And again, just as a reminder, this, the conditional use permit is only for the ground floor residential. Everything else with this building and development will be reviewed as part of the, the plan review submittal process and ensure that it all meets code and, and all of that. We're just considering residential on the ground floor facing the street versus behind a commercial use. So if they didn't have residential down there, we wouldn't be talking right. tonight. They, they, would just, this they would just do it. And with commercial on the okay. first floor. I have another question. Could you show us the elevation of the east side? You showed us north and uh, west. I do not have that in my presentation, but it is in your packet. Okay. I'll have to take a look at that. Because I will <clears throat> no. comment on that when it's time for this discussion. It's I, I didn't have that, actually. If that's... Oh, oh okay. Cross section shows a power line. Okay. Oh. Ugly to the bone. One more question for you. Mm -hmm. Has the fire department reviewed this? Yes. Or looked at it? Okay. They're usually the ones that have the bigger issue with power lines overhead. Uh, no, that their biggest concern was just that they can reach around the building and they are confident that they can do that. Any other questions for city? No, thank you. Thank you. Well, with the conclusion of the presentation, I would like to open this up for public discussion. Would the applicant care to come up and talk about this? All right. State your name and address into the microphone for us. My name is Rick Taylor. Uh, I live at 1019 Border Lane in Moscow. Um, you're, regarding your questions that you had about Avista, um, I had them out at the site and discussed um, uh, how, what our needs were, and they gave me their guidelines and what they needed. Uh, so we're meeting all those. Um, regarding the question of across the street on the north side, um, like Revolution Motorsports, they chose to build under the power lines, um, and it is an option. Uh, Avista is, does not say no, you cannot. Um, they recommend no, but um, we chose to be away from the power lines just since it was residential. Okay. And these. Um, these apartments will be higher-end apartments. This will be a very good-looking building. Um, it'll fit uh, the neighborhood. Um, it'll, it'll look much like a Revolution Motorsports with kind of a modern industrial look. Uh, uh, a shed-type roof um, is what we're considering now. It's drawn with uh, a gable roof, uh, but we're considering other options as far as roof styles to get some more uh, uh, creativity and, uh, you know, make the building look a little better. Any questions for Mr. Taylor? Questions? No. Good. I'm for board. Okay. Thank you. You betcha. Is there anybody in our audience would like to get up and speak in favor of this application? 
Is there anybody who would like to get up and speak not in favor of this application? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and talk about it amongst the board. Well, since I was the, <clears throat> uh, the, the voluble person in the question period, I might as well start the process. I am totally opposed to this. Uh, it seems unnecessary. It does not seem to meet the uh, criteria that we have to, to affirm to have this located here. And it uh, uh, goes against our comprehensive plan. The whole idea of motor business is to have motor business. And the idea of putting apartments in that particular slot um, simply goes against that. And the um, Rosauer's view estates that are being uh, produced here are not going to be uh, uh, very uh, uh, pleasant places to live, I would think, uh, because of all the noise and the uh, additional uh, fumes and so on that go along with the motor business activities on that particular corner. You might ask, how much, why do I know so much about that particular corner? Because I'm there probably four times a week. Uh, and uh, I know that area very well. And I think that that is a perfect place for a business activity. And that's why when I was on the city council, we had many arguments about <clears throat> the fact that Moscow does not have enough motor business and that we should have additional stuff and the whole idea of Almond being uh, reserved for that activity was to, to show that that would be a perfect spot for motor business behind rose hours for um, uh, motor business activities would be extremely useful and would work very well into the businesses that have gone further to the north and uh, are, are on the east side of your property, Mr. Taylor. I'm sorry that I can't support it if it were in a different location. I'm certainly not opposed to uh, quality and uh, architecturally significant um, uh, apartment dwellings, but this is not the place for that, in my opinion. And when we go through the the relevant criteria and standards, I'll be more specific in my particular uh, uh, problems with this, and we'll see how the rest of the board goes. I have a question for you about vehicular traffic, because I I'm not sure I completely agree, but one thing that I am concerned about with for a different reason has to do with vehicle traffic on Almond. Mm -hmm. in that when someone comes out, they really have two directions to go from any place, regardless of what this business is, whether it's apartments, whether it's motor business, whatever. They come out onto East Almond Street. or E Street, they can either go a block to the highway or they can go well, they don't really go north on Almond because there's nothing north up beside well, the, the next block up. But you go, you're out of town, you're, you're nowhere. So you turn and you go south on Almond and you basically hit a T street because you can't go straight through because it turns to one way and, and that intersection down by, mm -hmm. by Grop and St. John's is, is, is a busy intersection. So my concern is that apartment people are going to come down and they're going to overload Almond going south. However, that's kind of contrary to what you were saying the city council has discussed in the past about that being motor business. I think it's less conducive to being motor business because that's not a good street to be motoring on. Well, It's not good street furniture for a business. <clears throat> well, with all uh, respect for your opinion, uh, I think that, that it is a good street for motor business because we have very successful motor business activities just to the north of that. And um, the that entire long block uh, to the north between E Street and whatever else we're calling the next street up there, um, <clears throat> that area is extremely uh, well used and, and getting better used uh, by the day. Um, the the movement, I'm not so concerned. If, if there were, think about the folks in Robinson 
trailer court. Um, I think that we're calling it Robinson Mobile Home Park or Robinson Estates or something like that. And it's trailer park and that. But anyway, um, in from the, the people in the manufactured housing area, they have the choice of going uh, to E Street, taking a left on E down to um, North Main, and then getting on the couplet. Um, many people do that. But if you are going, say, say you uh, teach at WSU or you work at WSU and you go down to A Street, you take a right, and away you go. Um, there's not a lot of desire to go straight through to 3rd Street. If you want to go to 3rd Street, the, the easiest and most direct pattern is to go just one block over to uh, Main Street and then uh, get to 3rd and then decide uh, which way you want to go, east, west, north, or south. So I think that that um, the the other area there, the recycling activities, the uh, St. John's, uh, uh, the the. Um, uh, uh, the agricultural implements area, that's, that's extremely useful there. And that's part of the reason we wanted to maintain that area as a uh, motor business area. At least that was what happened. And I haven't been off the council that long, but believe me, uh, that was part of the discussion that we had when we were reviewing and changing um, and modifying the current comprehensive plan. Well, I like the layout of the site plan, the fact that it is using the topography that is there. Um, as a motor business, it's going to be a somewhat difficult lot to work with. It has a fairly severe slope to the east. Um, it's, it's sort of an odd-shaped lot. Uh, I think they're dealing with design issues well here. There is a, a need for single bedroom studio apartments. And uh, I think this could be, I mean, they've taken care of the parking. That's going to be the worst thing to deal with on this small of a lot with this many units in it. Um, I can understand Linda's point of view about the uh, motor business uh, development continuing in that area, but there are also uh, a number of residential uses, though they be across the street um, and within within several blocks. So um, I think I would probably have to speak for this. Uh, what's somewhat compelling to me is we're really talking about seven units. Um, the building meets all other applicable developmental standards. Uh, if we didn't have those seven units down on the floor, that's seven out of, I think, 28, we wouldn't be sitting here this evening. Um, the other thing I, I think about when we come, I, I remember vividly in the not too distant past, we, we got called on the carpet because we were approving too many variances. And so we had some training in here. Uh, and the training we received was you'd be very stern on a variance, but on the other hand, with a conditional use permit, if it meets the criteria and standard, then the, the theory is those can be approved. Um, we're here on a conditional use permit. Uh, I've reviewed this. I understand Linda's concern. Uh, I, I agree with Mark, quite frankly. I, uh, in looking at this, we're, we're really talking about seven units. Um, I think it meets the relevant criteria and standard, and I would support this. So I would move to approve this conditional use permit as presented by staff. We have a second? I second it. We have a motion, we have a second. I can count. All right. <laughs> I. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. So the motion passes three to one. Um, we need to discuss the criteria.
I don't have an objection to the criteria as proposed by staff, although I would I would say with regard to number four, uh, staff is in their, their proposed relevant criteria with regard to number four it says the development is a public necessity uh, and justified to be a benefit. I don't know that I would go as far as to say it's a public necessity, uh, but I would say it is justified to be a benefit uh, to the public uh, as it will provide an additional 28 dwelling units. That would be the only change I would make on that. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to put on the record my objections to this. Um, if we go to <clears throat> the, um, uh, the first uh, criterion, uh, <clears throat> uh, does not seem to apply. I don't think that that this building is going to generate uh, a public health or safety uh, problem, and I don't see that it will be um, uh, a nuisance uh, in the situation. However, <clears throat> um, and, and number two, it appears to uh, uh, deal with all the setbacks and so on. What it does not deal with is the uh, the proper zoning code, uh, in my opinion, and the uh, concern here for um, uh, the facing of this lot to <coughs> the uh, uh, the back end of Rose Hours is just not. <laughs> There's, there's no indication here that there's going to be adequate addressing of that um, that poor location. <coughs> And then uh, number three, uh, the proposed use, uh, I believe, will be injurious and detrimental to adjoining properties and the neighborhood because it takes off that continuing uh, focus on motor business. One of the reasons you locate in a place for motor business is because uh, if it's zoned properly and there will be other motor businesses in that area, uh, well, this turns 180 degrees away from that public policy and uh, there's no justification for it here other than the applicant wants to do it. And I'm sorry, I just don't think that the, the, um, uh, the shape of the lot is enough to convince me that, that, is, that, uh, that that's an appropriate uh, area for um, uh, for for uh, residential housing, um, I believe that it's going to be injurious to the neighborhood in that it will <clears throat> ruin the opportunity for uh, the continuation of motor business on the east side of Almon, and will not. Uh, I well, let me put it this way: I highly doubt that with the city standards, that there will be the kind of intense and thoughtful um, landscaping that the Robinson Trailer, um, or the Robinson Mobile Home Park, has put into their siting and their um, uh, essentially their their um, protection of their tenants from the the busy street uh, that Almond uh, is now and will become even busier uh, as that area of town develops, not just between E and 3rd Street, but out beyond E to the north. Um, as far as number four is concerned, the proposed use is clearly not a public necessity, and it isn't justified. Um, in, in any of the materials that we have received tonight. Um, I don't see any great need for apartments in this particular part of town. Um, I don't see the trade-off between the ground floor uh, activities and the upper floor activities uh, being uh, managed here uh, in, in any kind of thoughtful way. I'm really disappointed in that. And then number five, uh, the character of the proposed use if developed according to the plan is submitted, uh, I believe will not be in harmony with the area in which it is located. If we are talking about uh, residential housing and residential housing from the ground floor on up, um, the, the standard in that that neighborhood is really what the Robinson Mobile Home Park has put in. And that 
does not appear to be even close to what is being discussed here. Um, number six, the proposed use uh, will or will not endanger the public health or safety. I believe that the um, uh, citing this immediately next to rose hours and that intensive commercial usage and all that is involved in that including the trucks and the noise and the um, uh, the 24-7, well actually it's not 24-7, but the the 18 hour usage of those commercial sites is not going to be conducive to the uh, the living arrangements for people whether they're on the ground floor or the upper floors. And finally, and most importantly, this proposed use will be in conflict with the comprehensive plan. And I just think that <clears throat> based upon the material that the staff has presented, the material that the applicant has presented, there's not enough information here to justify this application uh, being um, uh, in conflict with a plan or that to make me think that this is something that would really, really be necessary for Moscow. I don't believe it is. I wish that Mr. Taylor had uh, developed this in a more thoughtful way within the confines of the comprehensive plan. And that's all I have to say about this. I have responses to several of those. Um, the first one, Obviously, criteria one and two, none of us seem to have an issue with. Um, number three, um, three of the major, major components of urban development are mixed use, diversity, and infill. And, and this project is I mean, ideal. It fits in exactly to what those are. Um, Granted, this might not be New York City or Chicago, it's Moscow, but it, it's still urban development and it meets those three huge criteria. And it kind of goes into number four, which <laughs> Moscow is a college town. There's, there's just no other way to define it, and so there's no way you can ever define or justify that, that extra housing is not a necessity. So I, I strongly disagree it, there's always a need for more housing and in a mixed-use urban development kind of standard I I think three and four go together and seven actually ties in with those in that the the zone here as as mark pointed out if we put a couple you know retail things in the bottom of it it, it still complies with everything else and in my mind, for Moscow, comprehensive plan really is growth, and this falls into that. So um, I don't think there's an issue with three, four, five, or seven. Um, six, um, one of my questions that Rebecca addressed was that it, it would meet zoning code, and as long as the access off of the street onto E Street meets that, I want to say it's 40 foot triangle setback for site, mm -hmm. then, then that makes that side safe and the site development is going to require a sidewalk on the east side of the street where there isn't one so it actually increases public safety. So I I find it hard not to justify all seven criteria. Mr. Chairman, I just would like to respond very briefly to what you presented. Um, I think that um, I'm certainly in favor of well thought out mixed use development. This is not an example of that. Um, the, uh, uh, the site plans that we have here um, are totally ordinary. There's uh, those, those gabled roofs uh, don't uh, give any uh, distinction to this proposal. And the, the question of uh, how are these people who live in these, these apartments going to have any kind of, of, uh, um, of access to uh, light and air and uh, will there be uh, any kind of uh, um, uh, balconies or anything of that nature? Nothing. 
zero, zip, nada. And I, I have to say that, that this is such a, um, uh, a, an appeal to give us more apartments so that we can uh, have yet more students shoehorned into them rather than thinking, how do we provide a community for these students while they were, are here? It is not true that we always need more housing for students. And at this time, with the, the pattern of uh, uh, building and, and housing patterns in Moscow, um, we probably need quite a bit more low-income housing, but we heard the applicants say these are going to be high-end uh, uh, facilities, and, and he's going to be looking for, for higher rents out of these. So, so we're not really meeting the, the housing need that exists out there. We're putting more uh, pressure on the high end so that um, a particular uh, developer will be able to have uh, a little bit of a, um, uh, a better deal here. There is no justification for that. And the data associated with occupancy in Moscow right now doesn't support it either. So I'm, I'm sorry, I just, I, I like to agree with you, Mr. Chairman, but I can't tonight. Any other thoughts? Um, I think as far as number five goes, speaking about the harmony of the area, um, this is an industrial type area. There has been a very nice looking building down across the street at Motorsport. There is a local vernacular uh, that goes with this area with the grain elevators within view. Um, the grain uh, implement, the agricultural implement yard. Um, I think this actually could be sort of a fun place to live. Uh, it's within foot distance of a nice uh, brewery, a bakery. Two. There's about to be two. There are yeah. about to be two, <laughs> that's right. Or three, actually. Uh, there's another one across the street from the new one. Mm. And, uh, and of course, Rose Hours is there. And there is, uh, I think it, it helps this area become more of a neighborhood. And um, I do support it. I hope to be proven wrong. Well, I think, Mr. Chairman, we're talking about relevant criterion standard at this point. Um, yes. And again, I, I have no objection to adopting the relevant criterion standard as, a, as proposed by staff. I, like I said, the only comment I had was with regard to number four. Um, I don't know that I would term it a public necessity, but I would certainly say it's justified to be a benefit to the public. I, I think you had commented a little bit on how it could be a public necessity, but right. um, I think either way, that was that was my my thoughts. So, well, I I think it could be in a necessity. Um, and the things it doesn't, you sounds like would be in favor of generating one that that doesn't include the word necessity, and I. I wouldn't balk either way. Yeah. Um, do uh, do we have a motion? Well, I'm happy to to move that we we adopt the relevant criterion standard as proposed by staff, with the exception of that small change in number four that states that the development is not a public necessity, but is justified to be a benefit to the public as it will provide the community with 28 additional dwelling units. So I think with that change, I would I would move that we accept these as proposed. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Passes three to one. And we will move on to the next agenda item.
Okay, second application for your review this evening is a special use permit application at 2780 West A Street. The applicant, which in this case happens to be the City of Moscow, is requesting a special use permit for a public service and utility facility that will be located within the multifamily residential R4 zone. The proposal is to construct a new well house facility that will house a new high capacity municipal well. The operating characteristics of the site will include a visit from one city staff person once per day to evaluate the facility and the well's operating components. The subject property is located here, outlined in red. This is West A Street. This is Warbonnet Drive and the Moscow Pullman Highway. This orange dashed line is the city of Moscow limit, the city limits boundary. And then in addition, this the um, West property line of the subject property is the Idaho-Washington state border. As I mentioned, the subject property is in the multifamily residential R4 zone. This zone permits public service and utility facilities subject to approval of a special use permit. Public service and utility facilities includes uses such as fire stations, telephone switching facilities, fairgrounds, cemeteries, pumping stations, and other similar public service facilities necessary to the neighborhood or community. Here's the zoning map in the area. Again, it's in R4. There's one parcel to the northeast, also located within the R4 multifamily zone. And this is home to a church facility, fully developed site. All other surrounding properties, as you can see, are in the motor business zone. To the south are all retail uses and a hotel use directly across the street. All the retail and the hotel uses front to the south. So the, these are all rear yards for those properties. The subject property has a lot area of approximately three quarter acre, 33,459 square feet. And an approximate lot width of 232 feet. As I mentioned, it borders the West City Limits boundary and it is located north of West A Street. The parcel is currently vacant and undeveloped and I already went over the surrounding uses. And the adjacent parcel across the state line in Washington is currently vacant and, and I believe utilizes ag agricultural land. Vehicle access to the site is via West A Street, which is a 40 foot wide paved street with curb, gutter, tree lawn, and sidewalks on both sides. The existing approach on the subject properties in the southeast corner it's proposed that this will be removed and relocated to the southwest corner with an access drive to the facility. This is a photo of the lot today and as you can see there's some grading activity going on out there which has been fully permitted. And this is a photo looking to the northeast and you can kind of see the church property there. This is the conceptual site plan for the proposed well site. The approximate location of the building will be in this area, which is 40 feet from the rear property line and approximately 140 feet from the A Street frontage. And then this is the location of the existing curb approach that would be removed and the new one would be located here. These are some samples of what the building may look like. They do not have a design fully completed for this structure as of today. This is a Google Earth image of the well number nine site, which is located just northwest of the Palouse Mall here. Just to give you an idea of what the site may look like. This is a structure, which I'm sorry, it came out real dark. Um, it's, a, it's a booster station that just gives you an idea of what this type of facility may look like. And this is an elevation of, of this well site right here that was constructed in the 80s. And so it's, it's anticipated that this structure will look very much similar to these, perhaps even better. Once again, the relevant criteria and standards for approval of this time a special use permit. Um, I won't read through these again as we've, we're pretty familiar with them tonight. But after staff has reviewed this application and the relevant criteria and standards, we are recommending approval of this application for a special use permit to allow the public service and utility facility to be located at 2780 West A Street. <clears throat> Any questions? I have one if you go back to the site picture, the, the one that actually shows, actually was towards the very beginning. You said something about there was one more, one more parcel on that site? 
Oh, I just said there's one parcel to the east that was in the R4. So basically everything north of, of the outlined in red is does does the churches. church own yeah. all yeah. that? Yeah. That's one. So it property. doesn't landlock some triangular no. shape back. Right. There. Nope. Oh, okay. I, I misunderstood what you said. I'm like, oh, no that problem. doesn't. Seem, okay. And there's probably nothing to do with special use <laughs> permit itself, but just the actual use of a pump station. Why place two so close? Is that is that I appropriate? Will I guess leave that question for the. Okay. Our applicant here to respond. Any questions for city? Yes. Um, uh, can you en enlighten us as to uh, the discussions between um, the city and the the church folks as to what the <clears throat> what the uh, boundary plantings will be like, so that they won't have to look at a, a concrete building or uh, boring. Uh, other building I, I might be able to hand, handle that because I I'm part of the leadership of that church part of the main stake leadership and I'm not aware of any discussions but I can tell you the topography right there is such that if there's a building located on it you won't be able to it's, see you're it. not going to hardly be able to see it and I can also tell you that there's the two the two parking lots right there the, the east parking lot mm -hmm. this building is used on Sunday really and then a little bit of use during the week, but uh, that east parking lot off of Warbonnet is where probably 80% of the the congregants. Well, I park in the other one just because it's closer to the entrance to my office in there. But uh, I the, guess the the reason I brought yeah. it up was because I think that that the city needs to do uh, just as much as they possibly can to show that we are doing the top of the line, not the minimal, but the, the most to uh, make that a livable, pleasant uh, addition to the neighborhood. And it doesn't matter whether it's a church, a neighborhood, a uh, motor business, or whatever is on the other side of that boundary. But that, that line, that red line, should be very heavily landscaped and, and properly so. And I, if I'm not mistaken, there's probably I think you, there's a picture, but there's there's a grade. As as you go towards the the northwest part, that's probably a 40 foot elevation, 40 or higher. Yeah, it's, it's it's way up higher. So I know I know that that building is going to sit sit on sure. top. So I don't well, know that there's <clears throat> if this sits on top, yeah, then it's going to be kind of, sitting out there like yeah. kind of a uh, <coughs> a pimple. And I don't <laughs> think that we want that kind of thing and so so however the boundary is is yeah, dealt with uh we're going to need to have uh really careful thought to the landscaping yeah. and just to respond to that linda um the zoning code requires a landscape buffer between certain zones so between R4 and Motor Business, there is a Type A buffer that would be required along the A Street I'm frontage. aware of that. There is not a landscape requirement between properties within the same zone. May I suggest that the city uh, take the initiative here as a good neighbor then? Uh, nothing that we can enforce as part of the, this application, but uh, to make sure that there is adequate and significant uh, landscaping, so that the uh, the folks who do use that east, or pardon me, the west parking lot, will uh, not have to take a look at um, uh, the the well activities of the city of Moscow. Actually, we could impose a condition. Yes, you could. could. Not That's exactly the purpose I mean, of, of the review of this type of permit is to. Well then, <laughs> okay. I smell and, like I smell and look out. And having. <laughs> Having just done a pump house for the city of Pullman, I can attest to the fact that they're, one, they're small structures, and two, they, they don't generate noise. So it's, I mean, they're, 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 they're a fancy little shack. I mean, they're, they're nothing fancy. Well, we want to minimize, at yeah. least I would like to minimize see the shack <laughs> element. <laughs> minimize. Shack was a bad term. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> It'll be better than a shack. Any other questions for, for Rebecca? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I will open this up to public, which looks like 
We have one of our four guests left. <laughs> Would you like to come up and state your name and address and tell us about this project? I'm Kyle Steele with the City of Moscow, 201 North Main Street. Um, to address your question regarding the, the site, the reason why it's so close to Well 9 is we assume that we'll get the same production as Well 9. And the purpose of drilling this well is um, for redundancy so that if Well 9 were to go down, we'd have that production capability. Okay. I have a zoning. I don't know. If, I don't even know if this is a zoning question. How close to a state line can you drill a well? We have, we're, we're, we have we're to talking be, about the edge of a piece of property, but it's it's also a state them, line, if I'm not mistaken, right? And I don't know if there's we'll get those Washington so those. kind of yeah, law beyond our local. <laughs> um, we work with the Idaho DEQ which governs our public drinking water system and we work with IDWR which governs our water rights and the water right that we are using is well nines water right and so we've added a secondary point of diversion for that the only condition that DEQ imposed on us is that the well head has to be 50 feet from the pop property boundaries on each direction, from or from each, yeah, on each direction. Okay. Well, and, and state lines may not even apply because aquifers don't just stop at state lines, and the whole clearly no. <laughs> the whole Palouse is under the same aquifers. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for Kyle? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. I could open it up for public testimony for or against, but there is no one left in the audience, so I'll that ghost in the that <laughs> ghost. So I will close the public hearing and open it up to the board. Thoughts, proposals. Uh, well, I move that we approve this this uh, application <clears throat> with one condition. And the condition is that there is a substantial um, uh, landscape buffer between the um, church property and the uh, the well site. And otherwise, um, I believe that the city has done a fine job in, in addressing the issues. This is about as good a spot for a well oh, as you can find. Rainbow. I mean, it... Uh I can tell you, there is nothing back there. You're looking at the back of Staples, you're looking at the back yeah. of Duranlos, and you're looking across the border to the farmland in Washington. So, Well, you know, we had a site on North Almond. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a motion. Do I have a second? Going once? I'll second. Um, <laughs> could I hear the motion again? I uh, the motion was to approve the application with uh, the one <coughs> um, uh, condition that a substantial um, landscaped buffer uh, be uh, uh, attached to the area between the church and the, uh, um, the boundary line. Okay. I, I would second the Oh, it's already no, been I'll, I'll let you second it. All right. I will second the motion. With Mark that. H has seconded the motion. <laughs> Which Mark? M will approve. <laughs> M squared. All, yeah. M squared, all, that's right. All Mark in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. So now let's deal with the criteria. Um, before anybody makes a motion, I, I think all seven basically as presented are, are probably applicable with regards to the extra condition. Mm -hmm. I'd like to maybe clarify or better define substantial, even if we decide it should be a type A or type B. Can, can you remind us, I know type A is a minimal one, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, you're talking about something that's got trees that are gonna have a height that are gonna that's create correct. a visual barrier. Yeah. So what type of barrier, is it, is it a? B would have the most canopy trees. Yep. Then, then uh, I'd like B? to make sure that, that that's included in the uh, uh, discussion of the, uh, original motion and I will move uh, adoption of the um, uh, 
the relevant criteria and standards uh, as the staff um, developed it with the understanding that each of them uh, as uh, applicable will include the um, provision of a type B um, uh, buffer strip. A motion, can I hear a second? I'll second that. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that is unanimous. Gets us to our next board meeting item. Thanks, Kyle. Um, Thanks a lot. Any other communication, new business, no nope. coming? Nothing at this time. Back of the deal. All right. Well, then, I move that this... How about well, if how I about move someone that else we adjourn? Move. Someone else move for adjournment. <laughs> have a motion? I, I'll, I'll let Mark second that. Okay. Right. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. We are done. It is 8 o'clock.